I want to preface this little video, ladies and gentlemen, with the fact that if you look historically, statistically, at the food supplies that FEMA's been purchasing, the uh, dried rations or the uh, uh, meals ready to eat, if you will, and go in and look at those, how many millions of meals ready to eat they have in the event of an emergency or those, remember there was a couple of orders they placed a few months back, four or five months back to, to have a, a bunch of these meal ready to eat uh, put together. Some giant, um, it was a contract with a company for a lot of money, okay? But if you look at the amount, and at the time I was studying that, I looked at the amount of food they're purchasing. I said, look, even if this food is for the FEMA camps, it's not going to supply uh, a packed house for very long. If you take even half of these FEMA camps and fill them up with people, they don't have the food to, to keep them alive forever. They simply don't. Remember, those people will be ones that are removed from the production uh, uh, ranks, if you will. They'll be removed from society where they're not working anymore. They're not doing whatever their part. And a lot of these people that are allegedly going to be rounded up, they're productive members of society. So that's going to take an immediate hit on the uh, the logistics of America, the pr food production, energy production, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And those people go to the camps. How are you going to feed them? How are you going to feed them with those meals ready to eat that the FEMA purchase? It's not that much. They're not going to be in there but about a week or two before those supplies are going to run dry. And I'm going to ask you, where is the food coming from to supply FEMA camps long term? If they're going to re-educate and return to society, that's going to take some time. Let's figure at least a year in prison. And that's a lot of people. A lot of millions of people. The Alaskan facility holds approximately 2 million people. Where's the food at? Where is the food at to feed these prisoners for long term? That's all I'm saying. It'd be cheaper in the end to purchase guillotines, right? And maybe some ropes and some FEMA coffins instead of a whole bunch of food and going through that trouble of keeping people alive long term. Remember, Hitler did not purchase a lot of food for his concentration camps. No, that's not what he did. And round them up and say, make sure you feed them well and take care of them and we'll let them out eventually. That's not how it works. You don't go to a concentration camp to for wellness. Let me put it that way. You don't go to a concentration camp for wellness. It's not a spa type luxury resort health environment. Okay. They don't, they just enough to barely keep you alive, drain you of all your energy, then have you dig a big pit and shoot you in the back of the head, right? Point being is, again, where is the food they're going to keep these people alive with? That's all I'm saying. The locations of FEMA concentration camps in America. There are over 800 prison camps in the United States all fully operational and ready to receive prisoners. They are staffed and even surrounded by full-time guards, but they are all empty. These camps are to be operated by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, should martial law need to be implemented in the United States, and all it would take is a presidential signature on a proclamation and the Attorney General's signature on a warrant to which a list of names is attached. Ask yourself if you really want to be on the list. The Rex 84 program was established on the reasoning that if a max, mass exodus of illegal aliens crossed the Mexican-U.S. border, they would be quickly rounded up and detained in detention centers by FEMA. Rex 84 allowed many military bases to be closed down and to be turned into prisons. Operation Cable Splicer and Garden Plot are the two sub-programs which will be implemented once the Rex 84 program is initiated for its proper purpose. Garden Plot is a program to control the population. Cable Splicer is the program for an orderly takeover of the state and local governments by the federal government. FEMA is the executive arm of the coming police state and thus will head up all operations. The presidential executive orders already listed on the federal register also are part of the legal framework for this operation. The camps all have railroad facilities as well as roads leading to and from the detention facilities. Many also have an airport nearby. The majority of camps can house a population of 20,000 prisoners. Currently, the largest of these facilities is just outside of Fairbanks, Alaska. The Alaskan facility is a massive mental health facility and can hold approximately 2 million people. Now let's review the justification for any actions taken. Executive orders associated with FEMA that would suspend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. These executive orders have been on record for nearly 30 years and could be enacted by the stroke of a presidential pen. 
Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control the highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10998 allows the government to seize all means of transportation, including personal cars, trucks, or vehicles of any kind, and total control over all highways, seaports, and waterways. Executive Order 10999 allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Executive Order 11000 allows the government to mobilize civilians and to work brigades under government supervision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airport and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Executive Order 11004 allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Executive Order 11005 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crisis. Executive Order 11310 grants authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plan set out in executive orders to institute industrial support to establish judicial and legislative, legislative liaison, to control all aliens, to operate penal and correctional institutions, and to advise and assist the President. Executive Order 11049 assigns emergency preparedness functions to federal departments and agencies, consolidating 21 operative executive orders issued over a 15-year period. Executive Order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in U.S. financial institution in any undefined national emergency. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the President, Congress cannot review the action for six months. The Federal Emergency Management Agency has broad powers in every aspect of the nation. General Frank Salzito, chief of FEMA's Civil Security Division, stated in a 1983 conference that he saw FEMA's role as a, quote, new frontier in the protection of individual and governmental leaders from assassination and of civil and military installations from sabotage and or attack, as well as prevention of dissident groups from gaining access to U.S. opinion or a global audience in times of crisis, end quote. FEMA's powers were consolidated by President Carter to incorporate the National Security Act of 1947 allows for the strategic relocation of industries, services, government, and other essential economic activities, and to rationalize the requirements for manpower, resources, and production facilities. 1950 Defense Production Act gives the President sweeping powers over all aspects of the economy. Act of August 29, 1916 authorizes the Secretary of the Army in time of war to take possession of any transportation system for transporting troops, material, or any other purpose related to the emergency. International Emergency Economic Powers Act enables the President to seize the property of a foreign country or national. These powers were transferred to FEMA in a sweeping consolidation in 1979. Okay, and quickly, uh, you can look down the list of these FEMA camps. There's a complete list here of FEMA camps in nice order. Um, let me revisit <clears throat> very quickly this quote as FEMA's role, where he says, The new frontier in protection of individual and government leaders from assassination and of civil and military installations from sabotage and or attack, as well as prevention of dissident groups from gaining access to U.S. opinion or a global audience in times of crisis. See, what that says in times of crisis, if you try and speak out, to gain access to public opinion, say, hey, that's not a terrorist attack. It's a false flag. Here's evidence. The government set this bomb off. It's a false flag. You're in trouble when you do that. 
global audience in times of crisis. Don't try to spread the information to anyone else. When you say, hey, the government set off a nuclear bomb in one of our cities. It's not really a terrorist attack. It's a false flag. Good luck with that. Good luck with that because Executive Order 11921, look, good luck. Good luck. Okay, so look down this list of FEMA camps. It's quite long, quite startling, quite well put together. And I've read you the intro to it as well. And you decide for yourself what they're going to use this stuff for.